It's our perspective. We think God failed us. And we use that to project our doubts into the next step. Hey everyone, welcome to the GS Podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm here with Emil. How are you doing, Emil? Well, thank you. How are you? Good, man. We had a, um, a funny start to the podcast. We had yeah. to try and uh, do it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so today we're actually speaking about surrendering to God. Yes. Um, as Christians, we, we, we don't have the final say in our life, right? We don't make up our own morality. We don't uh, create our own goals. Yeah. Um, our destination is, as Christians, we put it in God's hands. That's right. And um, sur- surrender is, is one of those, um, I guess, some people would see it as an obstacle in life. Because it feels like there is a challenge between your will and, and the will of God. Yeah. Um, and others, as they mature, they start to embrace it and understand why it's more important mm-hmm. to walk in the will of God than um, try and do things on our own. Yeah. Right. And try and, well, in a way, feel like we know best and, and try and create our own goals. So maybe we can start somewhere there where, you know, the challenge of, of surrendering to God, mm-hmm. you know, giving things in his hands and trusting him yeah. to, to obviously be faithful in his promises mm-hmm. and to have what's best for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think in order to know why it's difficult, maybe we should think about what are some reasons where people don't. Or refuse to, or find it difficult to surrender to God. What what, what are those things like? Uh, I'm I'm sure you've had those times where you have found it difficult to surrender to God's will. Mm-hmm. What were those things usually like? What's the main thing that usually comes up that's preventing you from, um, or obstructing you from, you know, submitting to God's will? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, the things previously. Um, that really was a challenge for me to give to God is obviously the most important things, mm-hmm. right? Um, the easier ones, you're like, if it works out, if it doesn't work out, really, I don't care. Mm-hmm. So you throw on that Christian quote, oh, I'll just leave it in God's hand, right? Because yeah. you hear that a lot of times, right? I'll yeah. just give it in, uh, I just give it to God's hands and, and he'll do something about it because I don't really care too much about it. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I think the ones that um, God has been really challenging me in is the ones that I do care about. Like finances and health? Yeah, it could be health, could be finances, could be work. Mm-hmm. Um, like for, for me, for example, I'm, I'm married. I've got two boys. Um, it's, it's not, I don't have the single life, right? I don't have that luxury where I'll be like, oh, okay, if I get fired, I can you know, look for another job. And if yeah. I don't find something for a month or two, I'll be fine. I'll still be fine. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a bit different. And I think the beauty of surrender is you find, like you find new ways mm-hmm. to trust God in, God. right? Like previously when I was in married or mm-hmm. a father, I didn't surrender my family to God because I had no family. So, so it, it's, it's one of those things where I look at him like, all right, God has me in a different season mm-hmm. and this season I've never been before. I don't have these responsibilities. Um, the stakes haven't been as high as what I have now, but it helps me move out in faith to give these things to God and say, well, if you're requiring me to walk on water right now, that's what I need to do. Yeah. And I need to trust Jesus fully yeah. to be like, okay, this this looks crazy. Um, it feels like I might drown, you know, um, but then I'll leave this thing to you. Mm-hmm. So I felt like to me personally, it was a stage of you don't just surrender the things or trust God in those things that are little, you got to trust God and give all in everything. Yeah. 
So that's my personal testimony and in that. What, what do you think is the main obstacle? Like, so we found those topics, but what's there, like the main obstacle that's actually um, preventing? Because, you know, if you truly believe that God is all powerful and that he is, and he truly wants the best for you, mm. then if you truly believe that from the bottom of your heart and you knew that he would, he would take care of you, yeah. then that wouldn't matter, no matter how important it is. So do you think it's maybe a lack of faith? Well, that's what I was literally going to say. Um, we know these things about God, right? That he's all powerful, all knowing, he's in control, he's sovereign. But we receive it intellectually. We don't receive it in faith. So I believe those things that are very important to us as Christians, mm -hmm. not only to know them, but to believe them. Mm -hmm. And I think as a Christian who... Who has been walking with the Lord for 18 years now, um, I have seen God over and over again being faithful in those very main areas of my life, right? In, mm -hmm. in the things that are needed, in, in my necessities, and never was I lacking. So I believe one of the big obstacles is sometimes people feel like they have been led down by God. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they will look at an experience and they're like, I trusted God, but God was nowhere to be found. So that's when doubt comes in to your next season. Mm -hmm. So they've been hurt and now they're kind of like a wounded uh, person. So they don't want, they're yeah. scared to have that wound open up again. Yeah. So, so you, in their in their mind they know God is all powerful but in the back of their mind they're like would God get me through this oh, so okay. I, I think that's one of the things that even if you look at um, Israel when Moses was taking them out of the land of Egypt God was continually continuously being faithful to them mm -hmm. he protected them he provided for them he cared for them. Their sandals, they didn't even need to replace. God was giving them quails. God was giving them water. Manor. out of Yeah, and manna out of the rock. Uh, sorry, manna and water out of the rock. He was continuously providing for them. Yet, they knew that. But it wasn't something that they've practiced in their beliefs. What's interesting here is they saw everything their mind comprehended it right like if you're going to see a miracle you you know what that means it means god is doing this but then they still had that disbelief in them that they always look back to egypt the trauma that they had yeah. there so my yeah. my point is as we're walking with the lord and we see how faithful he is yeah. with us daily we should not doubt that if, if anything, we should remind ourselves every time we doubt to surrender to God, we, we doubt whether to let go and trust in God, we should remind ourselves how faithful God has been in the past. Yeah. That's what I do personally, man. Yeah. I remind myself. Like, I, I would literally talk to myself, Martin. God's been providing for you financially. God's been putting bread on your table. God has mm -hmm. blessed you with a wife, with children. God is using you. So mm -hmm. it's as if I'm preaching to myself mm -hmm. to, to encourage myself for, for that next step of faith to say, okay, if you've trusted God with all this, then we're, what you're about to trust God in right now is nothing compared to what he's been doing in your life. So that, that, that's my approach mm. in, in, in this. I think um, from what I gather from everything you said, it's uh, the Jews, when they escaped from Egypt, they had a very pessimistic view on everything. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just God. It was literally everything because um, they had that mentality of a slave. Yeah. Where they were, they're still that slave that's enslaved to the Egyptians, to the pagans. They're no longer... God's people in their minds. We're not God's people. We are the slaves of Egypt. Well, they they were still desiring, for example, the onions that mm. they would eat in Egypt. It's the the point is 
they were facing six nations and each of those nations were greater than the 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 people of God but the the approach that Moses had and their approach on how God would rescue them was different for example if you look at Exodus 33 and Exodus 34 those two chapters are amazing please if you have the chance read them tonight mm -hmm. is that Moses said we're not going anywhere until we know that you're with us mm -hmm. that was Moses approach the people of Israel they knew God was with them because he was uh, bringing miracle after miracle after miracle but that's not where their heart was it wasn't with God mm -hmm. it was back in Egypt and all they did was complain. That's why the Bible continuously called them a stiff-necked people. So I believe in these situations in life, we can come and look back and, and see where, quote-unquote, God failed us, even though God never fails anyone. God is faithful to his promises. It's our perspective. We think God failed us. Mm -hmm. And we use that to project our doubts into the next step instead of coming forward and saying and looking at how God is being faithful to us mm -hmm. to say I am willing to surrender everything that is coming my way in my future because I've seen what God has done in my life previously mm -hmm. and I know that he's faithful to continue that yeah, yeah. that that's how so, I'm seeing it I think I perfectly understand um, what you just said. And I think that that's majority of Christians. That's their issue is they've been hurt before. And even though they might not think it on their, at the front of their mind, but they are mm. subconsciously thinking about it. And I think that they need to pray for healing from that pain to, you know, yeah. to move on with their lives and to finally be able to put their faith in Christ fully. Um, I think that's what, I challenge everyone that's in that scenario, um, in the, in that, you know, group to do that. And what I think is that there are another group of people where it's, it's not what God, how God failed them. It's how they failed God. And now they refuse to, you know, because they're scared yeah. to fail again. And but, I think those people are, they're not a small number. Mm -hmm. They are a large number, maybe not as large as the other group, yeah. but they do exist. What do you think about those people? Well, that's as you were talking, I was literally thinking about those type of people. It's it, they call, they call what they've done as an act of surrender, mm -hmm. but it was actually an act of immaturity or an act of ignorance. I'll give you an example. Someone would claim that God is their provider, right? The Bible says mm -hmm. God is our provider and he would sit at home and not work and expect miraculous provision, <laughs> right? Okay. But then when you look at the Bible, Paul's saying that a person that does not work does not have the right to eat. And a person, like in my situation, if he does not provide for their family, is worse than an unbeliever. That's what it says in First Timothy. So we need to have wisdom as to what are we surrendering to God? Because... Mm -hmm. When we surrender something to God, we need to understand that there's two parties here, us and God. If we surrender it to God, we are entrusting that God will do his part, mm -hmm. which means that we have a part to play in it. If we do our part, God is faithful to carry out what he, he will do in our lives. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe sometimes where people think God failed me, that's why I put into two categories. It's either you're ignorant because you don't know what surrender is or you're allowing sin to blind you that you can't see that what you are doing there mm -hmm. is not surrender. Yeah. It's you, you're imposing your rules upon God mm -hmm. and saying, God, I've given you the ball. Now you go score for me. Yeah. But then if you read the New Testament, continuously you see that Paul, Peter, and the rest of the apostles, 
we're always encouraging the church to be active in their life, mm-hmm. to be, uh, to work, to have peace take with, medicine. with their neighbors. Yeah, to take medicine, like Paul says to Timothy. To drink wine. Um, yeah, to drink wine, um, to love their neighbor. And as First John says, that for us not to love with words, but with deeds. Yeah. So it, it shows that sometimes we can have a flawed way perspective of surrender. Yeah. And then when things don't work out, because that's not God's way, yeah. we turn around and blame God and say, hold on, God, I gave you this. I trusted you with it, but you didn't deliver. But then if if God would speak to them audibly, you know, we we're like, nope, it doesn't work that way. You what I'm what you're calling me to 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 be entrusted with, what you're surrendering is actually your job. Mm-hmm. I called you to be faithful with that. And the example I gave previously is work, right? Mm-hmm. I can't sit at home and say, God is my provider. And then somehow there's going to be food on my table. Mm-hmm. No, my family is going to starve. We're going to be on the streets. Yeah. And there I'm, are exceptions, of course. So yeah. if God, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to you and he says to you, uh, Martin, I want you to go to uh, Burundi and, yeah. and do missionary work there. I'll take care of everything for you. Well, it's different. Th- that is. So, so obviously you have exceptions. Like, for example, if you're a full-time ministry you're relying on, on God's oh, provision. 100%. But even at that as well, I would say that if you look at the first century church, the church would send someone and will also provide for 100%. them, you know? Yeah. And when they are in that place as they minister, God will open the heart of the people there to help carry the needs for that person, yeah. right? And Within if, reason, of course, because yeah. I know some people... Not um, a Ferrari. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you know. But if you look at Paul, for example, Paul, even though he went to a lot of places, some places he refused to, to receive help. Mm-hmm. He was a tent maker. And he would actually work within his ministry. Wow. So not only does he go to a place and serve God, but he also finds an opportunity for provision. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said, like, the people that believe that God failed them when they surrendered something to them, uh, to him, it sometimes can be an act of ignorance. Mm-hmm. And that's why it requires wisdom for us to surrender to God. What needs to be surrendered? So it wasn't yeah. God that failed them, it was they that failed to perceive God's yeah. intentions. Yeah, they felt themselves. They felt and, themselves, yeah. And that's why you read in the Bible, for example, you have been destroyed by lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, we put ourselves in those situations. God is not putting us in those situations. And and you know what happens? Sometimes people continue to be in denial where they say, oh, God put me here for a reason. You're mm-hmm. like, no. That's not God's intention for you to be there. Sometimes you place yourself in those situations, yeah. right? There's a difference between Daniel being in the den of lions and God rescuing him and someone jumping into the den of lion expecting to be rescued by God. Mm. And it actually happened once. There's a video of that on YouTube. So I think I've, <laughs> I've usually given this um, yeah. uh, this metaphor, which is... It's foolish to go in front of a train and say, God's going to save me. Mm -hmm. Just move out of the way. Yeah. If you have a, because someone asked this question, I was, I was going through TikTok and I I saw this question. Uh, Should I take Panadol, you know, straight away when I have a headache or should I pray Mm -hmm. and, and have faith in God to heal me? And I said, yes, take, take both, you know, take the Panadol and pray for God to heal you. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. It, it's medicine. It's there for a reason. You know, when Paul tells Timothy, when he's Timothy has a stomach ache, um, and he, he's got I don't know if it's stomach. He's got stomach issues. He's got digestion problems or something. Um, he tells him to drink a little bit of wine to help with his digestion, to help with his illness that he has. Right? He could have said, "In Jesus' name, you are healed," and he would be healed. But that wasn't God's will. Yeah, God's will was for him to take medicine 
and and the reason why it's in the letter is it's this is important you know it's it's you're expecting god god's will to be done your way that's no longer god's will that's your will it's we have to have faith in god and for him to do things his way but that doesn't mean we should just stay still and wait so for example if i'm not working and i want a job right simple example i'm not going to be sitting there praying to god and then not looking for jobs like how realistically how am i going to get a job mm -hmm. yes god can do it yes but that doesn't make sense is do you really want that job or do you or are you just lazy and you want to you know you just someone to be your servant that's not who god is god he helps you because he loves you yes he he wants he wants that but if that's if that's his will he will do that but you're bending god's will to yours that's not going to work it's going to be impossible and you're going to end up regretting it uh, i know i've made that mistake before where i've you know pray to god please god give me this job please give me this job and god's like okay here you go and i got the job i'm like god this is a horrible job why did you give it to me you asked for it you said give me this job you didn't say god if it's in your will give me this job you said give me this job here you go a lesson you, learned a lesson learned it was a tough <laughs> lesson but yeah. i learned it and then i know now i know when i pray i say god if it's in your will give me this job if it's not in your will no matter what even if they want me even if i'm the best candidate i don't want it mm. And it happens, man. Sometimes I'm like the worst candidate, but it was God's will for me to get the job. I get it. Yeah. And sometimes I'm the best candidate and then everything goes wrong and I don't get it. And I'm like, oh, I guess it wasn't God's will. So I've learned through the hard way to surrender everything to God. And it's tough sometimes. I know, and especially I'm a pessimistic person. Um, <laughs> I am. I am. Yeah. I, I, I try not to be when it comes to God's will, but that's just my personality. I'm a very anxious person. I tend to overthink things. I tend to uh, imagine every single possible scenario, including the worst ones. Mm -hmm. And but when it comes to God's will, I've been training myself not to think that way. Yeah, it's difficult. It's like learning how to breathe all over again, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I have to do it because otherwise, I will hate my life. Yeah, um, and also something like. Um, as as the disciples were walking with Jesus mm -hmm. and they were watching Jesus how he would speak to people mm. um how he would heal people how he would even stop the storm in front of them and calm the sea they start in that process to learn more and more to let go mm -hmm. of their fears to let go of what they would think is best just like Peter, right? Yeah. When Jesus says, I am about to be crucified, he rebuked Jesus. Peter rebuked Jesus, says, it's not going to happen. There's no way it's going to happen. And Jesus said, you have no idea. You're going to deny me. Uh, but then in that process, I believe, Jesus was teaching them that they had no hold or control of their lives. And he was the one that was in control of the whole universe. Mm -hmm. I think in our journey with the Lord, you start to grow in how you let go and you surrender to God. Right. You start to see and trust God more and more. And God is willing to be patient with us yes. in the sense that, you know, it'd be lovely on our first day as, as converts, as Christians to say, eh, everything to God, I surrender all, which is the song. But we, God knows that it requires this relationship, this walk with him, you know, this intimacy that we have with him, this depth that we grow and get closer to him, mm -hmm. that we start to see, okay, I acknowledge God is in control, but now I want to believe it. I want to have faith in it and I want to place my trust in that. Mm -hmm. I want to place my trust in Jesus. Yeah. I think that's something very important. If you feel like you're struggling in some of the areas of your life and you feel like um, I'm holding on too tight to this and I feel like 
I'm holding everything together and if I let go it's gonna fall apart yeah which is why I'm not including God in it I'm just encouraging you to give that to the Lord and see how faithful God is mm -hmm. it might not work not because God is not faithful maybe God has something else in store for you and we have free will people can it's like for example if you're praying for somebody to come to Christ and you pray and you pray and you pray doesn't happen um, God's not gonna force and that's not real love you know yeah that, that's something that we we've mentioned quite a few times previously about yeah. uh, but that's that's a another example of um, being ignorant in what we surrender to God yeah uh, not saying that we don't give we still know, pray for people. yeah we, we still pray for people in the session is the thing yeah. you know when we but but then people. it's not that god failed us if that person doesn't come to him that person has a choice and he yes. makes that choice um we're about to finish up anything that you would encourage someone that is going through a very tough time and feels like quote unquote god let them down yeah. um just a word of compassion, if you have. Um, I've been there. It's tough. But trust me, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Even though you might not see it, just keep walking forward and just keep believing and having faith in Christ. And when it seems like you're at your lowest, just go back to the beginning. Go back to the cross where your sins were forgiven and all your sins were erased. Go back and... Just see that the blood of Christ is there and that that's all that matters. Amen. Yeah, just give it all to Jesus and believe in him. He's He's been faithful in your life. That's right. And I don't say it because I know what you've been through, because I know who Jesus is. And Jesus is always faithful, mm -hmm. even though we sometimes know. we can not be faithful, right? We're faithless. So hopefully that has encouraged you. Hopefully that you can approach this topic in your life with wisdom. Yes. Uh, it does require wisdom. Otherwise, we can take a very long detour um, in yeah. life. We've all experienced that. So God bless you. We'll see you next time. Take, take care. care. See ya.